read that real quick. Can you give me Ecclesiastes 2, verse 10? And now what we got, uh, when I said Ecclesiastes, uh, I'm going to show you something. We, we got the King James 16, 11 Bible. Now I'll show you my Bible. That's what we read from. Uh, you ever got to take my Bible? When King James originally got the Bible pressed up, they get a dumb in Bible dictionary, so I'm going to show y'all. It ain't no different book. But we got King James, but we got King James 16 and that. Uh, dumb in Bible dictionary. Right? Showing the old, the new, and the milk. Okay, you know what I want. Uh, you know how they always say some books been taken out of the Bible? That's what we got. We got the Apocrypha. We got the Apocrypha 16 book. Apocrypha is a Greek word for hidden books. Hidden books. Uh, the white Protestant Christians took it out. It had too much history in it. You know how a lot of people get confused when you get to the New Testament with the Greek? And uh, when they say no difference between the Jew and the Greek? Just because guess who them Greeks was? It was Greek speaking Jews. <laughs> We were the ones who translated the Bible into Greek. Seventy Hebrew elders translated the Bible into Greek because we had a whole Greek population. We was called Hellenistic Jews then. You know what I'm saying? We was called Hellenistic Jews. That's why when you get, it's no different between the Jew and the Greek. Just like I'm, I'm, I'm a Jew woman now. I'm in America. So I can say I'm American Jew. And it, it ain't no different between the American Jew or the other Jew over there. You know what I'm saying? So it's saying it's no different. Let's just say if I want to call myself a Jew and was saying I was American, but I'm still a Jew. You know what I'm saying? Or, or Israelite. Because the only people who was calling themselves Jews was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Uh, what, what, what is that? There's no three tribes right here. Right? The northern kingdom of Israel, they was, called, they was calling themselves the house of Israel. The Jews was calling them Gentiles. The Jews were talking to the Gentiles. So, uh, what I told y'all to get for me? A please, yeah. Yeah, read this. King James version of the Bible. I'm going to prove to you that there was something took. Now, I had another book. I can show you how King James was at war with the church. And you know King James is a black man. I, I don't know if y'all knew that. But before he was King James Six of Scotland, he was King James First of England. But it don't matter because we just want the word. You know what I'm saying? We don't care what color King James was. But read what you got. This is King James Version out of the Zonathan Bible Dictionary. Read. 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars of the day. Uh, what I told you to read in uh, Ecclesiastes? Hebrews 
Oh yeah, yeah, read that real quick. And then two and ten, two and ten. So read this real quick. Hebrews so chapter right 11, there, verse you said one. About the food. You can eat the barracuda because if you eat the barracuda, you'll die. So we have to have faith in the most high. Read what you got. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Okay. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Okay. The evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. So uh, faith is the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We got to have faith in Christ. If you hung in the wilderness, remember, Christ hung in the wilderness. And what happened? Satan came to tell him. He showed him all the kingdom of the world to do for and for. He said, look, this will be all yours. All. He said, this will be yours if you bow down and worship me. He said, man, look, get behind me. Matter of fact, he told him, man, shall live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Uh -huh. And he, he was hungry when Satan came to tell him. So you can only eat that bird. Can you read Ecclesiastes 2 and 10? <laughs> don't eat the bird. Man. Ecclesiastes 2 and 10. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 10. Okay. Look at the generations of old. Look at, look at, uh. The generations of old, Peter, Paul, uh, Zeph, uh, you know, all the different prophets, our people read. And see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Who put their trust in him and was confounded, read? Really? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? The most I ain't going to abandon you if you abide in his fear, read on. And whom did he ever despise that called upon him? You called upon the most high, he's going to make it happen. But you got to have faith and doubt not, like Matt, uh, Christ said in Matthew 26. <laughs> you got to have faith and doubt not. I heard something just now, and uh, I was reminded of the children of Israel uh, when God fed them now. Yeah. When he was saying that we have to trust God. I thank God for that. That's it. Yeah, I pray to the most. I pray. Now, another thing I want to touch on before we leave, wrap it up. One of the main things we teach is repentance. You know what I'm saying? We teach our history. We, we give our people the nationality back according to the Bible. You, you ain't no African American no more. You come, you Jew. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what's that? No, nah, we, we give our people our nationality back. We tell them, look, you ain't no African American no more. You Jew. You, you from Jew. the tribe of Jew. Jew. You ain't no West Indian Jew. black. Jew. You from the tribe of this. Yeah, we the Jews. Are, I'm going to show you something. Give me Revelation 2 and 9. We the Jews are the Bible. Let me show you this real quick. Revelation 2 and 9. The people over there that's in our land, they say, who they, what they doing? <laughs> they say they the Jews. Listen to what Christ said. Look at our Lord and Savior. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen to him. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation. Yeah, I know your works. I know your trials and tribulations you're going through, Rick. And poverty. Your poverty too? Who in poverty? We in poverty, Rick. But thou art rich. We rich come from it. Just read Romans 9 and 4 show you why we rich. The blessings, the covenants, all that was given. The law, the service of God and the kingdom, all that for us, Rick. And I know the blasphemy I know the filthy lie, read. of them which say that are Jew read. and are not, read. but are the synagogue of Satan. We yeah. ain't the ones that saying we Jews. We ain't the, he said that the synagogue of Satan. They don't know how they set up saying they Jews. Give me Ezekiel 36 and 5. Now I'm going to go to some prophecy real quick. Ezekiel 36 and 5. Let's do this. Oh, uh, give me a Zerman Bible dictionary. I want y'all to look up I do me. Look up I doom. Read what you got for me. Right. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 5. Listen to this. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all I doom you. So he said, look, I'm speaking against all I doom you. When you look up the word I doom you, it's a Greek word for evil. Uh, or who name, who, who name was Esau name was changed to evil. And uh, he followed the Edomites, which make up your so-called white man of the day. So that's who over there now. Matter of fact, hold on. Let, let the Bible prove to you who Edom is real. Which have appointed my land into their possession. When they point Israel into their possession, 1948. After the war. Man, after the war, 1948. They did that. See, we know the Bible truth book. Just like I know y'all. Y'all wouldn't have us in here if the Bible were, if you didn't believe the Bible truth book. That's right. They, Idumia, which is Edom, pointed uh, the most high land, our land, into their possession. With what? With the joint of all their heart, with <laughs> despite, uh, despiteful minds to cast it out for now, a prey. Now look, one more thing. Give me Joel 3 real quick. I'm going to show you another prophecy. Because now it's telling you that they, gonna, they appointed our land in their possession. When they did that, 1948, Went over there and declared, declared Israel as a state. Another thing, read this. 
I got three guys. Read what you got. Yeah. Joel chapter 3 and verse 1. Read. For behold, in those days and in that time, another prophecy read. When I shall bring again the captivity of Judah. The most high gonna gather us from uh, you know what I'm saying, the four corners of the earth. Read. And Jerusalem. Read. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down unto the valley of Jehoshaphat. You know, gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, which you see going on now. You see the way of the Middle East being prepared. The uh, valley of Jehoshaphat is in the Middle East. That's why you see all these nations in the East. All this stuff going on in the East. War about to pop off. Read. And, and why this war going to go down? Read. And, and we'll plead with them there for my people. Uh, the war going to go down for deliverance of us. All nations have conspired against us. Read. And for my heritage Israel, really? whom they have scattered among the nations. We were scattered among the nations. We were scattered to the four four corners of the earth. How we were scattered? I don't call those slave ships, really. And parted my land. Who parted the land? The Palestinians and, and your you know, white man, which is Idumea or Edom. They parted the land. The same people that did what? Pointed the land in possession. So what we're going through now, we're going through prophecies. That's what we do, too. We teach prophecies. You know what I'm saying? We teach prophecy. Now look, he want to read something for y'all. This is a book right here. So y'all right. don't think we making up nothing. This right here. When, when it comes to Edom. A book that was written about classical biblical baby names. Okay. Or whatnot. Uh, it's, it's funny what you can find when you start reading stuff. Because, you know, at first we didn't read. We still don't read as a people. But this, this goes over the name Esau. It says, let's see. Esau is considered a significant character in world history and the forefather of the Roman Empire. So Edom, Esau's name was changed to Edom. And remember, and Gen get there in Genesis for him. His name, Esau's name being changed to Edom. Did you show him the meaning of Idonia, right? Yeah, you already showed him? Yeah. Okay, I'll pray. Then I'm going to go through with uh, repentance. I'm going to go through repentance. Let's read Genesis 34 and 1. Okay. Genesis 34 and 1. Genesis 34 and 1. Genesis 34 and 1. Genesis chapter 36, verse 1. Read. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom? Esau is Edom. He's the Pope Paul of the Roman Empire. He pointed out land to it in, uh, in his possession. Mm -hmm. He parted the land with the Palestinians, you know. So all the prophecies are on point. That's what that's what makes us rejoice, because we know we know how deliverance is coming. When we go through a read these prophecies, we're like, oh yeah, we better get up out of here. That's but right. guess what? We gotta be in order to get up out of here. We gotta repent, 1 Kings 8 and 46. Because if we we gotta make sure that we got to make sure our body, our mind, body, our spirit right when Christ comes back. Because when Christ comes back, guess what? The grace is over. Because yes. a grace period ain't nothing. It's a certain amount of time to get yourself together before uh, payment for something is due. Just like if, uh, uh, what'd you say? Titus 2? Yeah, read Titus 2. Titus 2, we'll tell you what grace is according to Titus. Uh, yeah, this is a good one. Titus 2 in there. Book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. So this is what grace teaches us right here, read. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men. Read. Tell me about Christ, read. Teaching us that denying ungodliness, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, righteously and, godly, and godly in this present world. That's what grace teaches us. If we got time to get right, to repent, get it together, stop fornicating, stop whoremongering, stop eating unclean food, get it together. You got time to get it together because when Christ comes back, the grace is over. Remember that Hebrews 10 and 20? What's that? that did the Hebrews 10, what he said, we take advantage of the spirit of grace? 10 and 28. Get that real quick. Hebrews. You give me first thing. I want to read this uh, scripture. I think it's 10 and 20. It's out of 26. Yes, yeah, sir. Hebrews 10, 26. Read. All right. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Okay. For if we sin willfully, if we sin willfully, if we break God's laws willingly, read. After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. Because we, we, we went over sin in the first beginning what sin is, transgressing of the law. We break God's laws willingly after we have seen the knowledge of the truth. We know we do this for life. We know why we went, went into captivity. Read up. There are remaining no more sacrifice for sin. It ain't no more sacrifice for sin. Christ's blood ain't going to do nothing for you. Read up. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment. All the only thing you can wait on is judgment. Read. 
and fury indignation. Fiery indignation, read. We shall devour the adversary. Because everybody that's against God's laws is an adversary to Christ. Read on. He that despised Moses' law read. died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Read. Of how much sore punishment. He said, look, how much sore punishment, read. Suppose ye. Shall he be thought worthy? How much soul punishment suppose you you think he's gonna be thought worthy of that do what? Who have trod under the foot the Son of God? You playing with Christ, playing with the Spirit of Grace, trodden under the foot of the Son of God. Read out. And have counted the blood of the covenant. And the blood of his covenant, read. Wherewith he was sanctified and an unholy thing. Read. And have done despised unto the Spirit of Grace. And done despite to the Spirit of Grace. We can't take advantage of this spirit of grace. Now we, it's coming to us now. The most high prophets back on the earth. If we say we're prophets, we ain't saying we're no prophets. You're going to know the prophecy. You don't have to say you're no prophet. You're going to know them. At the end of the day, how people going to see when Christ comes back, they're going to be like, them the prophets. That's, the why, that's why this truth coming out so much. In our school, these brothers, all of them, the kids, everybody learn this front, uh, Bible front to back. And it ain't just, these ain't even not all the men. Matter of fact, we got 22 older brothers and all that's with us, but I think we got 25, all the men ain't even here. You know what I'm saying? That's who showed up at the congregation today. And you know, we still got people that we try to get them right, we try to get them in order, but we worldwide though, we worldwide. And guess what, right now, when we was out on the streets, earlier, just like you said, you seen us on the streets, on McLemore Bellevue, the same time we was out there, we had hundreds of other camps out there. And not just our camp. Throughout Memphis. Man, throughout the world. <laughs> not just our camp, this just one Israelite congregation. You got all different Israelite uh, congregations out here, though. Now I want to go to 1 Kings 8 and 46. So we can't take advantage of the spirit of grace. If you trotting under the foot of the Son of God, they say, how much soil punishment suppose you think he worthy? You don't, you're going to get play with Christ. Christ don't play. Read up, but read here. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 46. So just like I told you, one of the main things we focus on is repentance. We teach repentance because we know that's what's going to heal the people. Just like you said, uh, that scripture Psalms one by taking heed to the word of God, we can show our young men how to kiss their ways. First, we gotta show them who they are, cause they don't know who they is. They don't got no identity. You gotta put the identity back in. Judah means God's praise. God's praise. You gotta show them that look. You from the tribe of Judah. You God's praise, bro. You gotta show them who they are. You gotta give them a nationality. We gotta not what our oppressor taught us, our slave out to taught us, when, when he restricted us from reading and got out. People don't even believe in the Bible no more. They tell out, no white man gave us this. Don't give him credit for this. God gave us this. That's this right. is our history. Man, you, you give him credit for the moon and stars too. <laughs> they try to give him credit for everything. So while we still know that we got a lot of people out here that believe in the Bible. We got to make sure we get this truth to them. We got to show them. How, when I walk in, I say, all praise to the most high. They got Christ portrayed up there as a black man. That's right. All that's praise, right. you know. Because right. we still got a lot of people. They, got right. the, they still look they still this right. Like Angelo. Yeah. Hey, this is Central, this Central Booger. They still think that's Christ. And uh, did we bring the book of Russian icons? Yeah. Somebody show them images up in Russia. Find them images for me in Russian icons. I read what you got real quick. So, like I said, we focus on repentance. Read on. First Kings chapter 8, verse 46. So we started off with this, read. If they sin against thee, read. for there is no man that sinneth not. So like if the Israelites sin against me, it ain't no Israelite that ain't sin. Remember uh, Paul said in Romans 3 and 10, all of us come short of the glory. It's not righteous, not no one. All the Israelites had sin, read. And thou be angry with them. The most high was angry with us and did what? And delivered them to the enemy. So that they carried them away captives unto the land of the enemy, read. far or near. So we was carried away the captives to the land of the enemy, far or near, read. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. We got to remember who we are. What we got to remember who we are in? In the land whether they were carried captives. Just like we're doing now. We've been thinking ourselves. We remember who we are. We saying we're from the tribe of Judah. We know we saying we just like, what you say? And, and one good thing to, about that book right there, to let you know how they hide our history from us, try and buy that book and see how much it costs. What is it, what, $2,300, $2,400, something like that? Yeah. yeah. We got somebody checking out from the library for us. They're in college. And these books in their colleges, and our people don't even know about it. 
But you can't buy this twenty four hundred dollars just like you can't buy lost trails in the promised land. Yeah, we, that's like twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars too. You can buy it and you get it, you know. But so, you know, you, you, know, you, know so, you know, a lot of people ain't gonna go spend the money on the book. But if we get the money, we wanna have these books. You know what I'm saying? We wanna have the book because we know they try to they, they spend billions dollars a year to hide this information from us. And then what they do, they communicate evil to us on the radio, on the TV. Every time you see our image, you see a bad image of us. That's but you right. won't show us them images right there. Right. You won't show us the true image of Christ. You'll make a movie because the Son of God, you got all the historical facts and evidence, knowing that Christ is black, Christ was a Jew, so the Jews got to be black. The Israelites got to be black. You got all these evidence, but yeah, you can't. Okay. They got to move, move out the apostle Paul. <laughs> and Paul, was, what comes with Paul? He was black. He said, I'm going to life from the tribe of Benjamin. But you, you know, a lot of people say, he, oh, oh, he a Roman. Yeah, he was a Roman citizen. But he said, I too am an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. He said, God cast away his people, God forbid. Because I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. They're Roman in the land. So read it on, bro. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. So we got to remember who we are right here in the land of our captivity, read. In the land, whether they were carried captives. And repent. And we got to repent. How do we repent? Give me Acts 3, verse 19. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Three. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. So what converts us? Let's see what converts us. Psalms 19, verse 7. You give me Ecclesiasticus, chapter 34, verse 8. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. So this is what converts us right here. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. This is what converts us. This is how we repent. If you was an adulterer, stop sleeping with other men and wives. Repent and stop that, cut that out. And he gives you a solution. What's the solution Christ gave us for that? I won't know what you. What's the solution for fornication? Fornication. Yeah, what's the solution? No. I want to see if you know. I want to make sure. Seven. Make sure these brothers learn. Seven. Seven. And what? Read that. So Seven. if a brother was a fornicator, one. he's supposed Two. to repent from committing adultery. Now read that. Here go your solution from Christ. Read. First Corinthians chapter seven verse one. Read. Now concerning the things whereof he wrote one more. unto me, you know. it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Get your own wife. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She need to get her own husband. Christ give a solution. Now you give me what you know what I want. Read. Hebrews chapter thirteen verse four. Read. Marriage is honorable in all, Read. and the bed under fire. But whoremongers, whoremongers? and adulterers, Read. God will judge. You're going to get your own woman. You're going to get married. It's just, that's just a little repent and be converted. So you're an adulterer, you're going to get your own woman. If you're a fornicator, quit sleeping around whoremongering, going from woman to woman to woman. Repent and be converted. So your sin can be blotted out. Because all of us can be forgiven for our sins if you got faith in Christ. The scriptures tell us to forsake your sin and don't meddle with it no more. Some people, okay, let's just say if I was a whole month, and I forsake the sin of whole month. Here come the lustful thoughts again. Now I get to play with the whole month in spirit again. Next thing you know, I'm meddling with it again. Eventually, it's going to destroy me. It's going to take me in Christ's blood. ain't going to help me when it, when it comes time for redemption. So now, go right back to what you said, Psalm 1987. Yeah, I ain't going to go through uh, all the scriptures all the <laughs> I ain't going to go through all of them. But uh, I, I, I do a radio show five days a week, uh, and what, that's what we do. We, uh, we bring solutions to, you know what I'm saying? We bring solutions, we touch every, every topic it is, we touching it, and we bring a solution to it with the Word of God. Uh, we got online classes seven days a week, three times a day, 21 times a week. I teach them two times a week, uh, Mondays and Thursdays. And we teach people from all over the world. Most of the people that I teach, guess what, they are from London. They are from Great Britain. I, I te I'm teaching people in the Philippines. You know, so I got them out there passing out flyers and stuff like that. Uh, we got people in Amsterdam. We got people in Jamaica. We got people everywhere that's out there. Just like the day while we was out on the streets doing the work, that's what they was doing. They was out on the streets doing the work, spreading the gospel, spreading the good news, the good news that if we repent, get it together, we going to be delivered. You know what I'm saying? Read what you got. So read that again. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. Okay. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. Okay. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So it said the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So that was converts us. The law, because go to Ecclesiastes 34 and 8. And give me Leviticus real quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go, we're gonna go through some law real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 34 and 8. The book of 
book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 34, verse 8. All right. The law shall be found perfect without lies. You keep saying the same thing all through the Bible. The law found perfect without lies. You mean to tell me it's a lie that we should commit adultery? It's a lie that we should eat the unclean food? Cause what they said, uh, the pork. It got it got some it got uh all type of parasites up in it. Yeah, yeah. And you know these parasites they're saying you can eat it that day, you might be straight, but later on in life, if your parasites ready to kick in, yeah. you wonder why your leg is flying up. You wonder why your ankle is flying up, you can break. now you got gout. You know, now you got gout, you in pain. But you could have said what you say, heart disease? Heart disease. Uh, heart disease. Heart disease. All right. types of heart disease. They got, they got so read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 34, verse 8. All right. The law shall be found perfect without lies. Now you read what I want, uh, Leviticus chapter 21. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. So we're just going to go through just a few laws real quick. And it's just showing you when we teach repentance, this is what we teach the men. Read on. They shall the not. Men, well, the men and the women, we teach everybody. You know, I mean, you, we teach repentance. Well, like, read what you mean. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So that's a law right there. It's that we shall bald our heads, read on. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Neither shall we shave off the corner of our beard. Why is that? Give me that what happened with David when he said uh, he shaved his beard and yes, yes, and, and yes, yes, seven, yes, yes, seven, yes, yes. is it 11 or 7? You know what I want? Hold on. I'm going to show you what, what, how men felt back in biblical times when they shaved off their beard. I'm going to get it. I read that. Second Samuel chapter 10 verse 4. Wherefore Hannah took David's servant and shaved off the one half of their beard. So look, he had took one of David's servant. He had shaved, so I'm just giving y'all an example on how men felt when their beard was shaved off. That's why you see all the men here with us today, they can grow a beard, they beard grow. What you say? Definition. Okay, yeah, read on, read on. Wherefore Hannah took David's servant and shaved off the one half of their beards, okay. and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks. Just like our brothers shaking their pants today, it said he cut off their garments to the middle to the buttocks. But listen to what it said. And sent them away. And when he sent them away, what? When they told it unto David, he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. They was greatly ashamed when they had their beard cut off. They was ashamed. Read on. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown. <laughs> they were like, look, you stay there. You cannot come back to the Holy City until you grow that beard back. <laughs> Read up. And then return. And then you come back. So go right to Leviticus 21, verse 5. Leviticus so, 21, verse 5. Okay. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Okay. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Because we are holy people. You know what I'm saying? The most I set us aside from all the other nations. Read up. Nor make any cuttings. In their flesh. You see all our young men with all these tattoos everywhere in their face. See, they need this. This is what they supposed to be learning growing yeah. up. Now, you don't supposed to put no marks in your flesh. Right. You don't supposed to have no cut. They is getting all outrageous. All these tattoos in your face, your whole sleeve. They got to understand. Yeah. What if you live to be 50? What if you live to be 50? You got to look in the mirror and be like, I'm a dumbass. <laughs> 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 you just got to look at Hey, just imagine that. You're just like, oh, man. You look at that. Now you be wondering how you can get it all out of your face. These young brothers ain't thinking you might want to get married one day. You want to get married because you, you can't be no homemonger. You're going to die. That's why you get all these diseases. Remember, do that 20 to 61. Another evil thing don't happen to them. Because our people got the spirit of homemongering, got the spirit of being adulterer and being a fornication. Listen to this. Do that 20 verse 61. Ain't it? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 61. So this is another evil thing the most I gonna say they'll come on us for breaking this law, read. Also, every sickness, every sickness, and every plague, read. which is not written in the book of this law. AIDS ain't written in the book of the law. We number three in there here. HIV, herpes, chlamydia, gonorrhea. This ain't written in the book of the law, read. Then will the Lord bring upon thee. This said the Lord gonna bring them upon us, read. Until thou be destroyed. Who them diseases destroy? Us. The Israelites, they destroyed us. So now let's get another one. Uh, go to Numbers 15 real quick, verse 38. Numbers 15, verse 38. So we're just touching certain little laws in the Bible that we show, that, that we teach. We, we try to, uh, you know what I'm saying? We, we keep the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of our abilities. To the best of our abilities, right. y'all. Uh, Numbers yeah, 15, verse 38. Numbers 15, verse 38. 
speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes and the borders of their garments. That's why you see most of the, all the brothers should have them on their gums. I think we only got one brother that don't got them on their gums. He been with us for like a week. But see, that's where the spirit of grace come in. Because he don't got them yet. It's only going to be a, oh, bro, yeah, this. Got to give him time to be able to get him, get his, uh, to be able to get his fringes on his gums. And we don't wear these just on surgery. We wear these every day. If you see me out on a regular day, I got them on all my clothes. All my, who all got them on all their clothes up in here? Who wear fringes every day? Okay, I'll pray. I'll pray to the Most High. You're supposed to have them on all your clothes. What's your? Uh, you say you got a business. What's your profession? I I do uh I do real estate investment, and I do uh, I got a um uh, a mobile detailing company called King's Jewelers Mobile Service. Mm-hmm. So I detail cars. I do uh for a couple of dealerships and stuff like that. I, I saw a few other hands go up. Uh, this brother yes. right here. What's your? What is? I own a heating and air business, and also I do real estate. Are you certified in the internet? Yes. Who else? Everybody right. That's your own. Same occupations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they real estate in business. So what is that? Some kind of trends? <laughs> well, actually, yeah. I, that was in real estate before I knew them. Yeah. But I, I've been trying to pull certain brothers into the real estate. Because I'm trying to show them the freedom they have to be able to keep God's commandments. Uh, What's up, Brian? Yeah, quick, bro. Y'all like to uh, be on the yeah, yeah, I'd be on there, but you gotta be careful with those houses right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with them, with the Chevy County land bank job. But I'd be on there though. You just gotta watch out, cause man, the county they, they be going through. Some of them houses, they just say we go to a tax sale. Some of them houses at the tax sale, they sit up there, they give people a year to redeem their property. So if I buy the house, I gotta wait a year to fix yeah, it up. Yeah, I gotta wait a year to fix it up fix because it up. they have a time. They got time to redeem the house. Actually. One of the houses that I bought, the investment house I bought, I bought it from somebody that was being sold in a tax sale. So they signed it over to me for $1,700, so they could at least get some out of it because they already had it up in the tax sale. I filed the petition and I redeemed it myself. So once he signed it over to me, it was in my name. I filed the petition, I redeemed it. It didn't cost nothing, they didn't charge me nothing. I typed up all, Lloyd tried to me $2,000, I did everything myself and was able to redeem the property, fix it up, Rented it out, sold it, made a profit. So just be careful with that right there. What's up? Yeah, because uh, like the reason I asked that because uh, uh, I deal with like a lot of like different like nationalities and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and uh, a lot of folks I run across like well, like do jobs for me, like uh, Caucasian white folks. Yeah. And like most of what they do is they tell they you know or make sure their kids or folks that they don't even know like buy this house, buy this yeah. house, you know. That's and, right. But but majority like. That I've been running to, I'm uh, 35. Uh, and, and for the most people I've run to, this again, spread knowledge to really be black folks. Yeah, exactly right. You know, they, yeah. they, they won't tell them about, about you know, hey, well, Craig Lee got to have 2800. Yeah. Know, they're really, you know. That's, hey, I bought properties out of Craig Lee's too. Yeah, I think my first house next month. Probably like got two first house next month. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, like, share information that's available, you know, not only yourself, but, you know. Yeah, you know, I think what I do, you know what I'm saying? Sure. But see, that's why we gotta uh, teach them the laws. I'm gonna show you another law. Give me Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. Because see, that's what I do. I try to put brothers up. I try to tell them, look, bro, do this. You know what I'm saying? Hey, when you read it, let me know. Uh, let me know. I'm gonna show you how to get, where to get them for the law, how to get them for the law. Read what you got. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. Read it. 17. 18. Yeah, get, get straight to the point. All right. Thou shalt not avenge nor burn any grudge against the children of thy people, mm-hmm. but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You gotta love your neighbor as yourself. Mm-hmm. If I want you, I want you to treat me like I want to be like, like you want to be treated. If you got to hook up on some, some hook me up, cause I'm gonna hook you up if I got to hook up on some. So that's one. That's one thing. Cause we need these laws. Our people hate one another. Go jump up to seventeen. And read this. Verse seventeen. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. He said, not, he said uh, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart, Read. Right? Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. If anything, if you got, we got a problem with one another, the most high want us to come to each other and correct it. You know, but you see how, how people fight, beating each other down, shooting each other, killing each other. We wanted to, they said we what, the third danger city, something like that. Tenth danger city. We wanted, we top ten danger cities. Top ten danger cities because why? Hate and a bird of grudge against uh, one another. Read on. It said, Thou shalt in any rise rebuke thy neighbor. And when you rebuke them, you rebuke them with the word 
1 Peter 4 and 11 say, if any man ministers, let him minister as the ability that God give it. That's why if any brothers up in here, we have a problem with one another, we sit down and we gonna let God work this out. Because I ain't, ain't gonna say we ain't gonna have no problem with one another. We gonna have, it was a problem going on during the time with Paul. But the how they worked it out, they took it to the elders. And then they went through them scriptures. Read on. And not suffer sin upon him. Because I don't want my brother to be in sin. The wages of sin is death, Romans 6 and 23. They ain't suffering sin on my brother. We're going to solve this problem. We're going to solve it. So that's the problem, man. We don't love our neighbors. We love ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Uh, nobody don't want to tell them. Just like uh, the different auto options. Brothers be knowing what well, the different auto options is. They will not tell you that. <laughs> they try to hold on. But you can't buy all the cars, bro. <laughs> you can probably get you out of You spend your money, then what's going to happen? You going to let the white man buy all the cars? Yeah, hey, you going to let them? what they doing, though. They, 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 uh, Taking them, you know, to you know, because it take, uh, you know, you know, to get the license, you know, what you got yeah. to do. But they take it, they go to them junk, you know, and run them through. Yeah. You know, prepare. So a lot of folks, they won't even, you know, like, you know, because I know we're supposed to get the dealer out. But, yeah. you, know, like, you know, like the dealer, uh, uh, yeah, dealer license. license to the Memphis uh, junk down in South Hey. Yeah. I but, but, you know, it won't, you know, it ain't. But you, I'll tell you like this. Like, uh, Cause I know what you're talking about. You're talking about like the mini, the mini dealership license, where they go and pay like five hundred dollars and they get a get the dealership yeah, mini dealer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On one thing, yeah, uh, place on summer going in, there, but you yeah. gotta be careful with that too. See, you rather have your own dealer's license. Yeah. What you doing for them? You helping them use car. You can make a little money, but you getting them paid. Every car you buy, you gotta get it. See, I was doing that too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I do it now. I just go to the, uh, what's the Clint down there or uh, Flipper? Clint. I just go to Clint. Yeah, no, yeah, no, nah, Flipper ain't. They don't got Flipper no more. This Clint down. Right. There. The police yeah. found. Uh -huh. I just go down there, buy a car, fix it up, and sell it. I got two more for sale now. And instead of buying, give him five hundred dollars for the mini dealership license. Then you buy the car. Now I gotta give you another hundred fifty dollars. Then I gotta pay you to get my tag for me. Yeah, you know, I, I, I ain't gonna go through all that. Then I gotta still pay the tax on this junk. Mm -hmm. And every time I buy a car, I don't hit him now because with they dealers license, guess what they gotta do? They gotta buy what? Uh, a certain amount of cars a month. I mean a year. If you know how to hustle, you a good hustler, you can make it work. But we tried that out, we lost a lot of money. Because every time we buy a car, then he comes like, I, 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 where my profit gonna be at? After you have spent the money, fixed it up, now you're like, where your profit gonna be at? And you know you only really making money one time when you're sitting in a car. And that's uh, doing income tax season. You're gonna roll them then. You had your about 10 cars, you had your about 40,000, 50,000 dollars. Read what you got. Uh, now I'm gonna go back to numbers, y'all. Numbers real quick. 15 real quick. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Right. Speak unto the children of Israel. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation. Well, that's throughout our generation, read on. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it. So that's what this is for, so we can look upon these and do what? And remember all the commandments of the Lord. That's what we do. We look upon them and remember all the commandments of the Lord, read. And do them. And do them what? And do them. And apply them to our life, read. And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye you to go a whore. Then we do the will of God. We don't go after our own heart and our own eyes like we used to go a whore. So it's us repenting. You think uh, uh, the damn, uh, I mean, you think I won't get a spirit of lust on me? If I get a spirit of lust on me, I got to remember uh, God's commandments. Because in us can be tempted. Christ was tempted. Paul dealt with lust the whole time. Paul asked Christ three times to take that demon away from him. And what Christ said, he said, it's not my grace sufficient enough for you. So you better work it out. It's not my grace sufficient enough for you. So Paul dealt with love. But the point is, all I'm saying is that these uh, friends, they were what God's saying, they, you're supposed to look upon them and remember to do the commandments. And they do help. They do help because when you're walking around with your friends on, you know you're different. People look at you, they come up to you like, what's up, man? How you get this shirt? You know what I'm saying? Where, where you get that shirt yeah, from? They ask me, a lot of people ask me that all the time. A lot of people ask me to even make them, but you know, I tell them what it's for and what it's asking for, and they be like, oh, okay. It, it is just a, a fashion statement. Yeah. yeah. Uh, while you were speaking just now, uh, I was hearing something about uh, uh, separating yourself from the enemy. 
it is not to uh, hamper uh, your teaching. I just pray that in the midst of it all, we, we found uh, spotless. And, and I think we're going to get it if we keep going back to this biblical teaching. Yeah. I don't want, you know, I, don't, I hope that nothing I do will hurt nobody or offend nobody, but something that's going to be brought before us, it's going to be an offense to somebody. Yeah. And that's going to be that uh, person or those people that are not true believers of these biblical principles that we say, you know, we live yeah. by. Yeah. Yeah, and I, like the curse word, I understand what you're saying, because, well, when I was growing up, I couldn't say lie. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> lie was a curse word. <laughs> 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 couldn't say fool either. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't yeah. say fool. <laughs> but, uh, and, and that's true. I mean, everybody has to be educated in such a way right. to, to know uh, what's really cursing and what's yeah. not. Right. But right. as a teacher, yeah. Could be yeah, I feel, I feel. simple because you know the ill yeah. that the people are in. And so we don't need any excuses for this little sheep or this little sheep yeah. not to receive. That that's what he yeah. kind of said. Hey, I feel and, and then we don't want to just keep pounding on it because you did confess that it was a slip and, and we can move on from that. You know? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Okay. He talking about John 10. He wanted to bring out John 10. Not the John 10. The John 10 verse 3. Yeah, go there with John 10. Because it, it, you called it up. I'm going to bring it out. John 10 verse 3. And, uh, hey, I understand everything y'all saying. And, hey, just like I told you, hey, y'all need work. And I know this song that I have to work on as well. We, we, we do. We, we all do. The scripture says, it, 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 no, like, it ain't no sin. <laughs> right. But the scriptures do say, confess your sin and prosper. So yeah. it ain't no sin. But I will say that it's something that I need to work on is with the speech. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, read that real quick. John chapter 10, verse 3. And then this one thing, you know, I'm going to show you something. Listen to this. To him, the porter opened. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see what he Ah, yeah, yeah, read really. To him the porter opened, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out, and leadeth them out, and where he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Read. Really? And a stranger will they not follow. So Christ, he give you, he give you a prayer, but she... He said his sheep know his voice. He said a stranger will they not follow him, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. They know not the voice of strangers. So that's why when I speak, I speak with the Bible. I know how I step up sometimes, but right. the voice of Christ coming out their Bible. So they ain't gonna follow a stranger, but they gonna follow Christ because they gonna know uh, what's true. So that, that's the main thing that we teach. That we teach. Uh, we teach that we the Israelites according to the Bible. We teach uh, why we went into slavery. We teach how to get out the conditions, and we teach repentance. We teach God's laws. First Peter chapter two verse twenty one. Read. For even here in two where ye were called. Wait. First Peter chapter two verse twenty one. For even here in two were ye called, because Christ also also suffered for us, leaving us an example. That ye should follow his steps. So Christ left us as an example that we should follow his steps. You know what I'm saying? That's what a Christian is. A Christian is a follower of Christ. Who did what? Who did no sin. Christ didn't break God's law. So if he didn't break them, we got to try our best not to break them. Now we know we'll fall short. Read up. Neither was God found in his mouth. He didn't try to deceive nobody. He didn't have to the God. They already knew what doctor he was coming with. He even told them, my doctor ain't mine, but he has some sent me. He said, if you knew my father, if you knew him who sent me, you would know what doctrine I'm coming with. And when you read Proverbs 4 and 2, it says the doctrine. He said, uh, Solomon said, I give you good doctrine. Forsake not my law. The doctrine is, is the law. That's what Christ came. That's how we're going to restore order to this planet Earth. Y'all, we see everything all out of order. All out of order. So what we're trying to do, 
what we gotta do is restore order back to this earth. And we got the solution to do it, it's right here in this. It's right here in this. We know it worked. It's proven to work, you know what I'm saying? We got people come from all walks of life to change their life around and to serve God. Uh, I see you, you young men that's still in school. Yeah. Uh, how does they, how do they function? I mean, in the public. Yeah. Uh, well, system. a lot of them uh, in the public school system. Well, yeah. Well, you can take take my son, uh, Santa, uh, my son, star football player. I came into this truth, found out we came back to sad. He don't play football no more. It's a hard decision, but I love God more than I love the world. That's right. Now, I don't have no kids. So, uh, like, uh, I was married. I was married. Uh, I don't got no kids. Uh, I know a lot of elder brothers in our camps. They got kids in school. They already make sure that they their kids can be taken out for certain holidays because we don't keep no pagan holidays and be able to be taken out for high holy days as well. Certain high holy days and the schools honor that. You know what I'm saying? The schools honor that. I actually can't because I know uh, I know they father ain't here, them two brothers right there. Uh, I don't know how they dad does with them neither. You know what I'm saying? Teacher, and let her know those are uh, when the time she would be uh, not coming to school. And I write it all out, and she understands, and she asked me ask some questions. Right now, we're working on homeschooling too. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're working on public school. Yeah, yeah gotta get into public school. school. Cause I, I teach lessons all the time, and I say you gotta think. Uh, when I was in public, I ain't know nothing about a bird. So I went to public school. You know, somebody come up in there, you a bird? Oh, what? Yep. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what it is. <laughs> what it is now? Nice. Yeah, you know, so now you're trying to figure out what it is. Next thing you know, you stumble across what it is. Oh, what? You thinking it's a bad thing. Now what you're trying to do next? Trying to get you're trying to lose the position. I heard my man said, you heard break your Sabbath? Yeah, break the Sabbath. Oh, that's another law. It's the 21st century. 21st century, 21st century. That's another law. What, like, uh, what is, what is they taught us that the Sabbath day was Sunday. Oh. And that, uh, the true day of worship is served. And I'll be, uh, let me show you something. Read. You give me Exodus. You give me Genesis chapter 1, verse. You know. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Okay. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So this, that's a commandment to remember which day. Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So on the Sabbath day, we're not supposed to work. It's laws that we do, don't do on the Sabbath. We don't buy, we don't sell, we don't cook, and we don't work if we if brothers are able to get off on the Saturday day. You know what I'm saying? A lot of brothers, they can't get off on Saturday day. Now I'm going to show you something. Get uh, Genesis. Go to Leviticus chapter 23 first. Let me ask you now, since you said that, yeah. you know, I, for a moment, I was feeling kind of, I was feeling kind of bad. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, to see that you all had that type of order yeah. in your system and that, uh, you know, we were far from it. When you tell me that you got people that is, you know, not working on that Sabbath day, yeah. but you have got some people that hadn't taken hold of it totally. Well, they can't get, they it, can't get it off. You know? I don't it know. means you understand the job. Okay, okay. Uh, who got a job that they can't get the Sabbath off over here? Want to laugh? Okay. Now, why you can, why y'all can't get the Sabbath off? Well, I'm the manager of the store, so if I'm if if I can't take off, um, nobody else can run the store. I can't get I can't get it off. I gotta be there. Mm -hmm. If I can't work the Sabbath day, then I can't have a job there. Gotcha. Now I'm in the process of trying to find another job so I don't have to work the Sabbath day. But in this Bible, we commanded to work. A man don't work, he don't eat. Amen. Right? Uh, now, how long have you been at that job? Uh, let's see, I had this job for three years. But I haven't been in the truth for three years. I haven't. I didn't believe in God before I came into this truth. Okay. So, you know, it's a process. Yeah, now we hear from that other gentleman. Well, we do the same thing. I, I run a store also. Okay. And uh, all praises, we close at Twitter on, on the Saturday. <laughs> so. Now, I want to ask y'all this. Okay, so even though y'all had to work on the Saturdays, right? 
You still no buying and selling and cooking. Do you still buy, sell, and cook because you had to work the Sabbath? No. They still, they still, they try to honor it to the best of their ability. Because we in the land of our captivity. Yo, slave master don't want to give you the Sabbath all. Right. You know, these brothers, they try to put in to get the Sabbath, they can't get it. And you know what I'm saying? Uh, just like I tell them, it's all about your faith. You know what I'm saying? Like with, uh, I like his story, for example, uh, Jeremy McCann. When he found out he had to keep the Sabbath, he just sat out, went up in there, he told his boss, like, look, he didn't care if he's going to lose his job or not. I ain't working the Sabbath. Right. I ain't working the Sabbath. This is the right. going Sabbath day. Right. Is this one is going to be. Right. <laughs> and he said, hey, you put me for the Sabbath, I ain't showing up. And he get, his faith so strong. He had faith, he didn't doubt not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He got the Sabbath off. Man. Sabbath. <laughs> me, me, I ain't working the Sabbath. That's why I got my own business. That's why we pushing all these brothers to do their own thing. And right. Real estate. That's key, I'm going to show you something. Read Judges 5 and 11 real quick. Read. The book of Judges, chapter 5, verse 11. Read. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the place of drawing waters. Okay. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. So we, this is a big rehearsal going on before Christ come back. We got to rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Some brothers can't get the Sabbath off. Uh, give me Philippians chapter 3. Verse, is this what I want? No, chapter 2. 2 and 12. 2 and 12. 2 and 12. Because remember, that's that spirit of grace kicking in. We know we're under grace. We know we're under grace. Brother might have to work the Sabbath. If he don't work the Sabbath, he, uh, he, he can't pay his bills. He can't do that, but we got to build these brothers faithful. A lot of these brothers new coming up into this, what, about a year? I'm the, I'm, I'm the person that's been in this the longest. I've been in the truth five years. I started in Tennessee by myself. I started here by myself in Memphis. And look, these ain't all our brothers. These ain't all the Memphis brothers, and even the women ain't here. So I started by myself, and see me start by myself, and then with every, every week I'm in the school and teaching, I'm looking, I'm like, man. All these people that we got, and they steady coming in, they steady calling, and we steady growing. That's a blessing. But read that real quick. Listen in. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Okay. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So we know we're under the spirit of grace. So these brothers, the brothers that got to work savage. They got to work out their own salvation with uh, fur and trim. You know what I'm saying? They, they still trying to do it to the best of their ability. So it's no buying, it's no selling, it's no working, it's no cooking on the set. So even though they had to work half a day, they still didn't go out and buy. They still didn't go out and sell. You think Christ don't see that? Christ, Christ see that. He was like, they trying to do it, but... Hell, they, they can't get it off. They're trying to get it off. And he say he's working on getting it off. And that's the best thing. My brother sitting up there trying to put forth their best to get the Sabbath day off. You know what I'm saying? I tell a lot of new brothers that come in, especially if they don't got jobs. If they're coming in looking for a job and we try to help them find a job, we let them know, look, try not to get a job working the Sabbath. If the first, because a lot of jobs going to come your way. Because remember, uh, Ecclesiastes 2 and 1 say, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation. So now you want to deserve the Sabbath, you want to keep the law. Here go a bunch of jobs come your way. You, you ain't been able to find no job until you're ready to come serve the Lord. Now you got all these jobs come your way, but all of them want you to work the Sabbath. Now you got to make a choice. Do you trust in the Lord? If you trust in the Lord, for never the worst. You know what I'm saying? Whoever put their trust in him was confounded. Me, I was struggling. I was struggling. My business was, uh, my business was slow. Houses ain't selling. I was just working more, making money off a little rent money. I mean, you know, that ain't nothing every month. So I'm like, I might have to get a job. All these jobs keep coming my way. Work the Sabbath, work the Sabbath. I ain't working the Sabbath. I ain't working like I do. Before, if I work the Sabbath, you know how much stuff I would have had to give up? I would have to give up preaching on the Sabbath. I am not working the Sabbath. I stayed patient, stuck in there, trusted in the Most High, said I will not break his law. Now my business is doing good. You know, selling the house, balling all of them, do a big, big, uh, big, do a big deal out of there so the most I blessed it. You know what I'm saying? Because I kept my trust in them. So that's where the faith, you know what I'm saying? The faith is evidence of things hope for. Things not saying, that's when your faith kick in. You know what I'm saying? So you got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. What so you say? Actual, uh, actual Sabbath day. Yes, sir. Yeah, let me show you here real quick. Read that uh, Sabbath day. Genesis Sabbath day. 1 real quick. Genesis Sabbath. 1. Two. Yeah, even more. Sunday is really the first day. And then 23. Week. 
straight. I think it's 23 and 32. So you don't put yeah. a word on. Yeah, give me Genesis Sorry. 1. Now I'm going to show you because y'all know a day begins in the evening, right? So we keep the uh, we keep the Sabbath Friday sundown and Saturday sundown. I'm not going to show that approval to you. Give me Genesis 1. Yeah, in the morning. Uh, day in the evening, one day. That's all in the evening, the morning. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 5. Okay. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Okay. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So a day begins in the evening. It's from the evening to the morning. So we keep the Sabbath Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. So when the sun go down tonight, the Sabbath day over. Now, if you give me Leviticus 23, 32. Leviticus 23, verse 32. Yeah, even when you look up the word Sabbath, it says Saturday. You look up the word Sabbath, it says Saturday. They say the Roman Catholic Church, they changed it from Saturday to Sunday. But remember, that's a law we're supposed to remember to keep it holy. Yeah, in Spanish, Sabbath. Yeah, Sabbath. Yeah, Sabbath. Yeah. So and they, that's what it means, Saturday. Uh, look, does anybody got any uh, type of dictionary up in here? I'm trying to read the dictionary. Yeah. I look up Saturday. I think it's Saturday or... Now, you got to read what you got for me. The video is 23, I need to start it too? Yeah. That what I want? What do they say? Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, this particular Sabbath right here is talking about the uh, Day of Atonement. We got the Day of Atonement come up. That's the one Sabbath out of the year where we all commanded to fast. We all commanded this to fast one Sabbath out of the year. It means every man, child, everybody got to fast. And what we're doing, we're atoning for our sins. Leviticus chapter 23 verse 32 Okay. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest And ye shall afflict your souls In the ninth day of the month At evening from evening Even evening shall ye Evening unto evening Shall ye celebrate your Sabbath So this is how we keep Sabbath From evening to evening Friday sundown to Saturday sundown Because the evening and the morning was the first day So a full day go from evening to evening so I just went to this scripture just to explain it a little bit better. What you got for me? Yeah, okay, read that. This is a, a Western Dictionary. Uh, Saturday, the seventh day of the week, observed by some Christians as, and Judaism as the Sabbath. Yeah. Yeah, because with my job, the only way I got out on the Sabbath is I told them this way. This is what it is. I told them, they ask me, they, they, they come there and try to ask you so, in so many different ways, what are you really? So I just told them, you know, you got to get smart. I told them, you practice Judaism. And once they go look at it, they'll know that they need Saturdays off and then how, how holy days are in, included with that also. Because everybody yeah. is implanted our laws into their so called. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we give out forms for certain brothers too to help them get off on the Sabbath. But a lot of brothers, they were subject to discrimination and things like that and uh or they bosses start when they find out that okay they saying that they're jew uh black jew or whatever and you know next thing you know they boss get there acting crazy actually with their brother right here uh this brother he was real cool with the boss you know what i'm saying boss was a white man and he went to turn in the form and get the savage off so after that dude just started getting him hell dude started getting him hell i guess he looked us up and he was like hold on you know and he started, you know, he started getting them hell, and the brother sat up there and said, you know, uh, basically it got up to the point, I told him don't quit, but it got to the point where he was like, look, he can quit. Yeah, so, what you, what you finna say? Uh, I want to ask you, uh, where did you get your format from? You, you know, your order. That order? Your order. The, the way that this system is set up, yeah. you know, just like you, you know, your, your different deacons and your different I have to you use the Bible to come up with that, yeah. that order. That yeah, every, every, all order, even from the garments. Even from the garments. All this, like this right here, this wore like a pearl. So all the order come out of the Bible. Yeah. I, got to, I got to tell you, uh, I said, uh, I said, I'm going to let some brothers come over. I said, and I listened to them from a distance. And I say, uh, I use this name. I said, they are, they are militant uh, group of people. Uh, did you understand what I meant by oh, yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, they call us everything. Well, I mean, it's nothing to yeah. offend. No, it, no, it don't offend us. We, we well, I mean, I was saying it in an offensive way, but I meant that you was you all seemingly was somebody that was ready 
to go for go to war. Yeah, He's ready to go to war that's with the truth. Yeah. Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah. Well, that's all I would. That's no, what I No, I wasn't about what you said. I wasn't yes. yeah. nah. Listen to this. Listen to this. The book of we are ready to go to war. Listen to this. The man. book of Exodus, chapter fifteen, verse three. Okay. The Lord is a man of war. He's a man of war. And give me Ezekiel 37, verse 10. I'm going to show you what Christ is doing. Yeah, we, hey, it's, they say we nationalists. They call us everybody, but we soldiers for Christ. Right. So when you say militant, you're right. Remember, uh, give me 2 Timothy 2 and 4. Show you that, you know, because that's what Christ uh, That's what Christ called the apostles. That's what Paul, well, that's what Paul called the apostles. Uh, 2 and 4. Two or three, or Second five, Timothy five. chapter two verse three. Okay. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That's what we are. We soldiers of Christ. Read what you got. Ezekiel chapter thirty-seven and verse ten. Imagine seeing all us in these right here. You know what I'm saying? We got ceremonial gums too that we wear for our feast day. Read what you got. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived and stood upon their feet. An exceedingly great army. That's what Christ did. Psalms 94 and 16 said, who's going to stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Christ building his own right here on earth. That's what a lot of people don't understand. Mm -hmm. We're actually building our own. That's what we're doing. Right. Well, we're building a Christ arm. According to the scripture, he said they stood on their feet and exceedingly great army read on on that. Well, right Yeah, where you was at? You, you dropped it. Because I want to show them who this army is going to be. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 10. Okay. So I prophesied as he commanded and me. That's what we do. We go out the streets, the neighborhoods, the projects. We go out and we prophesy, really. And the breath came unto them. And the breath is the law. They came back into them. Because we, we remember what he said, Proverbs 72 keep my commandments and live. Remember being Adam, he breathed into him the breath of life. Adam, he breathed into him the commandments. The commandments been on earth always since then, really. And they lived and stood upon their feet. And they stood upon their feet, really. An exceedingly great army, really. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. That's who this arm is. The whole house of Israel. What you got? Oh, no, I don't want to do it. No, I don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, that's what that's what the uh, that's what Christ is doing. He's building up. He sold for Christ. We don't mind, you know. Uh, and, and I, I wasn't offended by it. I'm saying, you know, people say, oh, they be like y'all nationalists. Hey, they uh, they say, hey, they say we racist. They say, they say we we just go about what the Bible say. But we, you know, we can we we take all types of constructive. We could. If we couldn't go out here and do what we do, if we can't take uh, constructive criticism, right. people call well, us not all of it. Constructive yeah. criticism. Yeah, yeah they call us out. Of, out of, but look, I'm off the issue. Yeah, but they call know. us out our names, and we still take it though. Huh? Dude, they call us out our names, and we still. Yeah. I had grown men tell me to do this yes. and do this to them, and all types of stuff. Oh, and you know man. what I do? I'm still standing up there reading the Word of God. Right. You know what I'm saying? Cause we gotta take that. Remember, he said, you got to suffer persecution like I suffer. Right. So they're going to call. They call Christ the devil and said all that, and right. people murmured against him. So when we go out there, they're going to murmur against us, too. Right. Yeah, what's up with it, bro? Uh, I just got a question. Okay. Uh, did you brothers know that the slave ships was in the Bible? Us being brought over here in slavery, did y'all know that was in the, in the Bible? Oh, okay. Yeah, we didn't get through on 26 days, but let's hit that before we roll. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Okay. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spoke unto thee. Oh, give me the other map here. Let me show you something. Here you go. It's saying the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now on the map. <coughs> take this map over here. Show them what Egypt is. Show them what Israel is. You don't need that one. Show them. Now you see Egypt on the map, right? Yeah. Show all of them. Let see it. Make sure they see it. Now you see what Egypt, Israel is, right? right Do we need a ship Egypt. to go from Israel to Egypt? That's Israel right in here. You said do we? Yeah. I did. Did we need a ship to go from there? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Right word. Did we need a uh, ship to go from Israel to Egypt? No. Yeah. I can't. You I can't walk. Tell you. Yeah, we walked That's out the first time. <laughs> so. Okay. I'm hoping to. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you Egypt is synonymous for another word in the Bible. Exodus 20, verse 2. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. So Egypt is synonymous for this. It's a Greek word. Read. I am the Lord thy God, 
which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. Egypt is called the house of bondage. Go right back to where you was in. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Or the house of bondage or slavery. Read. Again with ships. Because the Israelites never went back into Egypt in slavery after they came out the first time. They, after they came out the first time, they never went back to be slaves in Egypt again. You know what I'm Remember, they went into Syria captivity, Greek captivity, Roman captivity, Persian captivity. They ain't never go back into Egypt. So he said, you're going to go into Egypt again with ships, or the house of bondage, or slavery again with ships. Read. By the way whereof I spoke unto thee, Read. thou shalt see it no more again. Read. And there ye shall be sold until your enemies. And when you get to well, these slave ships land, you're going to be sold to your enemies, read. For bond men and bond women. You're going to be sold to your enemies for bond men and bond women, read. And no man shall buy you. Or redeem you or liberate you from captivity. Have we been liberated? Marcus Garvey, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, everybody been trying to get us out of here. Nobody ain't been able to liberate us. Why? Because Christ going to liberate us. <laughs> That's who, the most I got to show his power. He's going to show his power. He's going to redeem us. So, uh, Egypt is synonymous with house of bondage. Because what, uh, what was that land? Who was it originally named after? Mizraim. That was one of Ham's sons. That's what it was called, Mizraim. When we was made slaves there, the most high called it the house of bondage, the furnace of affli affliction, the iron furnace. He called it all different types of names. Letting you know that this slavery right there. So, he was saying we're going to go back into slavery again with ships. Oh, uh, the whole do number 28 it fixed our people. The whole do number 28. You know what I'm saying? It shows you what happened to us for breaking God's commandments. And to get out of this way, just like we read in uh, 1 Kings 86, Solomon said, If they sin against me, for there is no man that sin not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the land of their enemy, but they be carried away captive far and near, if they shall bethink themselves and repent. We got to bethink ourselves and repent. We got to come back to this Bible. We got to teach it in its entirety. And we got to show the people who they are. Because uh, the time is getting short. Right. The time is getting short. We see, the, we see the things going. We see the signs all around the earth. We see the prophecies being fulfilled. Uh, the show I do call Understanding Prophecy, where I go through a lot of prophecies. You know what I'm saying? A lot of prophecies in the Bible. And we go through the prophecies and we show everybody, like, okay, see how this is coming to pass to this day. Because uh, remember for us, uh, Isaiah 46 and 10, it say, not one of these shall fail. Now, this, just like he said, we're going to go into slavery with ships. It happened. Our names were changed. It happened. Uh, everything the most I said that was going to happen to our people, it happened. Yes. For breaking this command. That's right. Yeah, so that's what our teachers uh, based on, uh, you know what I'm saying, our teachers based on. Our history, our nationality, and keeping God's laws. Uh I'm, I'm a little ways uh, curious about uh, the time and place. Uh, hopefully that I can come into a setting again uh, and hear from you all again. Okay. Uh, with that being said, uh, I, I'm just one of the type of people that I believe that before I would instruct or direct anybody to anything, whether it be a good or bad, I would want to examine it for myself. And so uh, I would, if you will, uh, give me a set day and time where that I maybe can come to some setting that you all have uh, organized and uh, allow me to come and sit in. Yeah. Uh, me and whomever might we, we be. We meet every Saturday at 1.30. It's 1661 the mark. 1661. 1661 the mark. What is that? Lamar That's that blue Rizzi. building right there. Lamar, Lamar Rizzi. 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 Oh, yeah. Raise yeah. Is that the place I saw you all? Seemed like you was in a parking lot. You had somebody was standing in the middle and you had other men standing around you. <laughs> With yeah. it back to you, and I said, "Well, they got him secured. Whoever is <laughs> speaking, that's just to keep them, keep the dogs off of them, or whoever." 
I don't know, cause we, we be teaching in a lot of different spots. So um, we go out and train to teach the word on the street. So like a lot of the new young men that we got come in, or new men we have come in, they train to go out here and do this. Just like right now, you know, uh, you know, I'm the most knowledgeable teacher among everybody up in here. But T, I could have sat down and been like, look, bro, you can do this today. Because all of them learn the same thing. That's our job. Uh, remember the covenant was we be a kingdom of kings and priests. That covenant never came to pass because why? Only the Levites was the priest. But when Christ came back, he said we're going to pray. I mean, when he come back, he said we're going to pray what we're supposed to be. That's in uh, Revelation 19. He said there's going to be kings and priests. All us kings and priests. Now, remember, uh, uh, this Hebrews 7 and 14. It said our Lord sprang from Judah. The Christ concerned, I mean, uh, the tribe that they spoke of none concerning priesthood. Now look at us, from the tribe of Judah, priests. You know what I'm saying? Priests, remember the Levites was to be the priests. But now we coming back as a kingdom of priests. So now you see Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manel. So we got all these priests coming. And all of them teaching the word of God, and they respect the cities, they respect the countries, bringing out the word of God. You know what I'm saying? So we got people... Uh, Yes, on the side. You know, one thing that I keep uh, reflecting on is that I live by proof being in the pudding and I see a lot of men. Yeah. You can't deny that there's something going on. You can't yeah. deny that uh, it's proof in it. So, yeah. that being said, you know, uh, me and you all, all for. Going forward. Yeah, I'm gonna show you this picture real quick. Hey, all praises go to the most high. All we do is serve God. That's it. Just do what we command you to do. You know what I'm saying? That's it. I'm gonna show you a picture that we took. I'm gonna show you two pictures that we took in the past. Uh, show them one with the bus and I all like done. And I'll show you this right here now, purple and gold right here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's why I'm saying it ain't just up. Uh, uh, yeah, I let y'all see it too. It ain't just a nation. Man. Yeah, we, that's what we're building. We're building a nation. Bring our nation. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're building a nation. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join our UIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.